Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of CEO Talks. This is May Ben Khadra. Today our guest is Mr. Henry Gomez, President, Hydro Building Systems. Mr. Henry, thank you so much for joining us today. So please introduce for us a uh, hydro company and what does it do and also talk us through about its background. Hydro is uh, one of the biggest aluminum group in the world. It's a Norwegian company and 35% uh, 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 shareholder is a Norwegian government. And uh, it's a company which is working on aluminum from the, the mining of bauxite and then till the end of making what my company do, which is a profile to make window, doors, facade in aluminum for the building. So the full chain in this company. It's uh, more than 30,000 employees in the world and uh, quite a big company and uh, Norwegian. So very strong in uh, about sustainability and uh, thinking long-term future. So an interesting company and a unique company in the full chain of aluminum. So what do we mean when we say branded aluminum? How does it differ from uh, traditional aluminum? What kind of impact does it have on the environment? And uh, from a, a construction or architecture point of view, how is it different? In fact, um, so in the hydro group, uh, it's called here Technal. Mm -hmm. Technal is a, a company which was acquired by, by hydro a long time ago to develop aluminum solution for the building industry. So when we go to the market and we commercialize our products, they are called Technal. And um, it's, it's a European system uh, coming from France. So most of the development is done in France and we do here local specific adaptation to the local market. So we are a specialist of making a thousand of aluminum profile with accessories to make a beautiful performing window, door, sliding, facade. All what to make the envelope of the building much better for the building. And uh, coming from Europe, we have a lot of constraints about thermal performance, energy performance, uh, uh, resistant to the wind, resistant to the water because of a lot of regulation. And when we come in the Middle East, we try to apply the same approach to make the building better. That's our game. That's our job we try to do. So governments now are talking about making the transition from linear into a circular economy. What kind of role does hydro company has when it comes to making this transition using your aluminum products what kind of climate impact does it have today the, the building represents 40 percent of the co2 emission on the planet we speak a lot about the cars and the plane but building is 40 percent and when you look at the building today the new building we build if we put a good facade envelope with a good window the good facade solution the, the consumption of energy in the building for eating cooling, light, is more or less reduced the level where the CO2 emission is not anymore the life of the building. It's about the construction itself. All the material for the building today represents 70% of the CO2 emission of the building and its life. So the construction part is key. Aluminium, when you look at the building today, CO2 emission of the material, first is cement, concrete, and the second one is aluminium. Today, when you make a building with a full facade glazed, 25% of the CO2 emission of the construction is a facade. Aluminium is a fantastic material. You have a, a default at the start that when you take from the start, from the mining to the final product, a lot of energy. But aluminium, you can recycle. So we have done the choice in our companies now since uh, five years to take back the old facade and all, all window and to remake new window with the same aluminium. In that case, we reduce the carbon footprint dramatically. A normal aluminium coming from mining to the profile to the building coming from China have a CO2 emission of 20 kilo of CO2 for one kilo of aluminium. Huge. In Europe, Middle East, we are more or less at 10. This aluminium recycle we are doing from all window is officially at two. So when you make a facade in Dubai, window, doors, facade, glazed, with a normal aluminium, 25% of the CO2 from the building, with our product, you reduce it by 70%. And that's important for the future. We are, we are the first one to make that. It has been a fantastic investment to make it possible to develop the technology, 10 years of work, and since five years, a, a plant to, to cut the whole window in small pieces, to retreat the aluminium, and to make a new profile good for the building. And this is, a, we hope, the industry will move a lot because we are the first one and it's important for the construction. And we see that over the next 10 years, it will be a 
big evolution. In your country, we are making a lot of new buildings, but now we have started building no, 50 years ago, buildings which are very bad for energy, not well isolated, bad for acoustic, bad comfort, and now it's time to change them. That we have to recycle this material and to redo the same thing. In aluminium, we have everything to do it. And uh, we are discussing in, uh, some plans for the future to make it possible also in the Middle East and to find uh, the way to make it here. We said the, the, the government have a lot of requests, a lot of needs, a lot of questions about sustainability, circularity. And we say building, concrete, aluminium, on aluminium, we know how to do that and we're going to develop here more. That's where we are. Throughout your answers, you mentioned the word technology multiple times. So to what extent do you rely on technology and innovation into making uh, construction more uh, climate friendly and into making this transition from linear into a circular economy? Today, in, a, in my company, Technal, we are 3,000 employees in the world. More than 200 of them are engineers dedicated to create new products. And that's about innovation. That's about creating products for the future, which are better performing at all points of view. And most of the focus is about energy in the building and sustainability. That's the only way to develop. So we have people which are dedicated to make patent innovation. On the other side, we have uh, the circularity is not something uh, we can do easily if we don't invest in uh, industry, in equipment. When you take uh, all window or all facade, there is aluminum, plastic, uh, neoprene, uh, screws, steel, stainless steel. How to make that window back to be normal aluminum? So we have a developed uh, patent technology plant in Europe now, and we hope to come in Middle East soon, is to be able to make from this window, we demolish and we cut into small pieces. So a lot of patent on this industrialization. And then to make this aluminum back in the process, a lot of technology, a lot of innovation to make it possible. So Product-wise, step forward, investment, and the process of circularity. We are, we are launching now in the Middle East a new generation of window and facade. And these products are all the material in the window, 80% is already recycled material. From aluminum to plastic, some component, all recycled. And these windows are in 50 years, 95% will be easy to recycle. Today, when you look at all products, we have installed 40 years ago. It's difficult to recycle everything. So we have to put some time in the floor. This new generation of product will be fully recyclable. From each element, we'll be able to reuse for the future. That have been a lot of investment and time and money <laughs> for the future. So let's talk about hydro company presence in the MENA region. Of course, we have multiple giga projects the governments in the GCC are working on. So what kind of role is hydro playing when it comes to these giga projects in the region? First of all, we are interesting to know Technal is uh, in the Middle East since 44 years. So we didn't come here uh, yesterday, long time, a lot of competence developed over the time. We have, uh, it was uh, at the start by law, it was mandatory to be a type of uh, company mixed with some other partner locally. But uh, now we are the full owner of the company since three years. So it's a full hydro company. And uh, we start in Bahrain, we develop in Dubai. At the moment, we are starting a, a company in the Middle in uh, Saudi, and uh, also this year we open a company in Egypt. So the setup is uh, step by step implementing in the place close to the market, close to the architect, close to the deciders of the building to be helping them in the development. So that, that's that's why we are trying to develop on the Giga project. Uh, we are doing a lot in Dubai of uh, big towers. At the moment, there is one or two ongoing which are quite big with our solution, Ex extremely architectural buildings. Giga at the moment there is a lot in, uh, in Saudi and we are at the moment acting and uh, starting to deliver for some of them and some of them will come most probably. So we are always present on this big project. So when you were talking about your client base, is it mainly only corporations? Is it um, the construction sector? Is it governments as well? In fact, we have a different level. Uh, the people who pay the invoice are people which are going to take our product and to fabricate and install the window on the facade. But the people we speak every day with as one which are going to design the building, want to reach a level of performance on fire, on acoustic, on, I would say, thermic is a key element, on design. So we speak with the 
political people, making the architecture of the city, people which are making the architecture of the project, the ones who are going to build at the end, and we are going to, to develop and to find the best solution for that project. And then our customer, with them, we support, give the tools, the product, and they will prepare everything to install. So let's move on to talk about your presence in Dubai. Uh, this is an amazing showroom. Um, it's, of course, showcasing a lot of your products, your innovations. So tell us about your presence here in Dubai. Yeah, it was, uh, Dubai is a very important place. Huh? We cannot be in this region, uh, how can I say, strong in architecture and not being strong in Dubai. So we used to make a lot of business in Dubai for a long time, big towers, giga project. But we also think it was time to touch a bit more the end user housing market. And for that, the showroom is very important. So we have decided some, uh, some months ago to install our office and to move our office to this place, Commerce City, where they build new building, very attractive for the future, very interesting for us, and we build a showroom. And the showroom is about an uh, architect can come, an uh, end user uh, can come to make the house, they can see the product, and they can discover another way to think the comfort at home. Because we are in aluminum, we can make a very big glazed surface, uh, movement, uh, sliding, opening, the sun protection, and this uh, light, is, light is life. And with aluminum, we can make a lot of things. So it was important for us to have a place where we can show all the possibility and to group with our people. In this area of uh, commerce city, there is also now a warehouse, and uh, we are looking at the possibility to move our, all our logistics here, so close to our office and to have on the same location uh, the key element. It's close to the airport, and uh, the region is big, so airport for us is a way to travel important. It's also easy to go and to work here and to, to make people from uh, everywhere coming in that place. So for us, it's a very strategic, important position for the future. This is a question I've been asking for the last two or three years, and of course, following COVID, we have seen uh, supply disruptions, supply chain is issues, and when I interviewed many CEOs in Q4, many of them pointed out to the fact that now we are expected to see less uh, supply disruptions and less pressure on supply chains. To what extent do you agree? 20 was COVID. It was a nightmare because the business was uh, very difficult. And 21 was the opposite. It was a type of rebound which was huge. And no industry could follow. So it was sourcing was a nightmare impossible to have a component for our product, for our window, but now it's more under control. Business is more stabilized. At the level we have the control, we have also multiply our possibility of sourcing. So now it's uh, working more or less normally. It's not, it's not always perfect, but we have the control and we have no surprise when we go to the market. But uh, it was very complicated last year. Thank you so much, Mr. Henry Gomez, for this interview and you are president of Hydro Building Systems. Thank you. And thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. This is the end of this episode of CEO Talks. Take care.